Hello everyone. So after having lengthy discussion on parliament around 12 to 13 hours, let us delve into the next chapter that is parliamentary committee. So parliamentary committee, three of the parliamentary committees were also present in parliament chapter that was financial committees, public accounts committee, estimate committee and committee on public undertaking. So those three committees were also in Lakshmi Kant in uh, the parliament chapter but we did not discuss there because I wanted to discuss those three committees in detail and so we have included those three committees. As as part of standing committee in this chapter. So let us see how we have planned this chapter. So what we have done is that first we will respond that what is committee and why. So what and why expect as has been our tradition that first we uh, before discussing any topic we delve into these two things that is what is that topic and why that topic, why that particular committee, why that particular institution. So what and why aspect of parliamentary committees we will first will and thereafter we will discuss what is the significance of the committee, why we do have parliamentary committees in the parliament and thereafter we will discuss the working of the committees, how these committees work, right. Thereafter types of the parliamentary committees, so there we have divided uh, parliamentary committees in something called ad hoc committee and standing committee, right. And then standing committee as well, there are multiple sub categorization that we will see and thereafter you have in the last section 9 to 10 MCQs that I will expect you to attempt. So after having given this introduction or having created this layout for this chapter, let us delve into the chapter, right. So what is this committee? Instead of discussing this parliamentary committees, let us first develop our understanding about the committees and thereafter we will delve into parliamentary committees, right. So committees are nothing but a smaller body, it may be of 10 percent, it may be of 25 percent depending on the larger organization. So suppose as an IAS officer you are heading a big organization, a PSU which does have 500 members. Now as a organization which values democratic ethos like our parliament while decision making it is necessary that you take into account the decision, the opinion of each and every member. But at time what may happen that you may not have time to reach out for a decision if has to be taken. Uh, you may not have time to reach out to all these five members and to have your opinion or to have their opinion. Now the second situation can be that the kind of decision that you have to take, suppose you have to take a scientific decision, you may find that most of the members may not have knowledge of science. So the first constraint was time and the second constraint in democratic decision making is expertise. Right? And these are the two situations that our parliament also does have. Our parliament does not have enough time for in-depth discussion and our parliament at times may not have expertise as well. So what is the basic job of our parliament? So the basic job of our parliament is law making, right? Although our parliament does have multifunctional role that we will see in the course of this video or although we have discussed the multifunctional role of our parliament in the parliament chapter as well, right? But we will have a discussion in this video as well. So our parliament does have multifunctional role but the basic role, the very fundamental or the primary role of parliament is law making. But you will find that suppose uh, you have this COVID crisis, now suppose a bill has to be brought in Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha for the solution of this COVID for which biotechnological intervention is needed. Now you may not expect the professional politician, the traditional politician who does have knowledge of social sciences, you may not expect those parliamentarians to have knowledge of biotechnology, right. So the first constraint is that each of member, each of parliamentarian is not expert. Maybe it may, they may not be expert on science, few may not expert on technology, few may not expert on environment, right. So in parliament as a law making body where every kind of bill is being brought, your parliament Parliamentarians are not expert into handling each and every kind of bill. So the first constraint was expertise, second constraint is time, right. So how many sessions we do have? So in every year we do have three sessions, right. So 16th Lok Sabha, that was Lok Sabha from 2014 to 2019, if I talk about that was 16th Lok Sabha. So 16th Lok Sabha collectively sat for around 335 days or 331 days perhaps. 
Now, if I say in one go that parliament, any particular Lok Sabha sat for 334 day, it may seem humongous. But let me break up this, right? So, 335 days they sat in 5 years, right? So, for uh, one year, the first year basis or the per year basis, if you find out, it would be 335 by 5, right? So, it would translate into somewhere 65, right? So, 65 days every year they sat. Now, you further break up 65 in a year. Now, if you further break it into sessions, so we do have three sessions, right? In, uh, in parliamentary chapter, we had discuss, discussed that we do have budget session, that is the first session of every year, budget session, thereafter you have monsoon session and thereafter we do have winter session, right? So, we do have three sessions. So, 35 days, uh, sorry, 65 days, right? 65 days in a year, it's set for by three sessions. So, it will hardly translate into 22 days in a session. So, your parliament is setting, so your parliament is setting only for 22 days in a session. Now, consider the amount of uh, work that it has, it is supposed to do. So, it does have these many roles. It does have executive role, it does have judicial role, it does have financial role, it does have electoral role and it does have legislative role. And now all these function and that is what I was talking about that multifunctional role of the parliament, right? So, all these function it has to perform within a session that is 22 days, right? 22 settings. Even out of this 22 settings, right? The three sessions that I was talking about, right? The first session of each year, that is budget session, is purely dedicated to the budget only, right? So all these functions they have to perform within that two sessions that they have in uh, winter session and in monsoon session. So the first constraint that I talked about, right? The first constraint was time, and the second constraint that I am talking about is expertise and it is in this context context that it is in lack of it is in view of lack of these two factors that the parliamentarians neither have time nor they do have expertise they created something called parliamentary committees so parliamentary committees are nothing but uh, a smaller body of generally 25 to 31 members and i have taken an average number the average size of parliamentary parliamentary committee that we are going to study will be this 25 to 31. Although you will see that there are certain committees which have 31 members, there are certain committees which do have uh, 10 to 15 members as well, but the average size because you have more number of committees which have this 31 members and lesser number of committees that have these 10 or 15 people. That is why I have taken the average size of parliamentary committees at 25 to 31 members. So, it is in view of these two constraints that we do have that the parliamentarians have that they have created these parliamentary committees where they could have in-depth discussion the, because the in-depth discussion if I talk about so if any bill is being presented in parliament suppose Lok Sabha and in Lok Sabha you do have 545 members. Now if you start discussing so suppose a bill has originated in parliament and now if you start discussing for matter of depth discussion for having a in-depth discussion if you start discussing a bill and if you start seeking the opinion of all these 545 members in a bill i can guarantee that there would be seven or eight days of discussion now try to understand that when you have generally 20 to 25 days of a sitting as a parliament, you won't be able to pass anything more than three bills, right? Because on a particular bill, you are spending seven to eight days in name of in-depth discussion. So, how many bills you can pass in a 20 to 25 days session? As a parliament, you cannot simply get away by making these laws. Right? As a parliament, you do have other function as well. You do have to look after governance. You do have to look after administration of the country. You do have this foreign relation. Everything has to be done. And it is in view of these circumstances, in lack of time and because of lack of expertise, that these bodies, these smaller bodies, parliamentary committees has been created, that as soon a bill is presented to the parliament and if the house feels 
that for the detailed discussion, for the in-depth discussion, for the detailed investigation, that bill needs to be sent to a smaller body, then the opposition will create records or opposition will demand that let that bill be sent to uh, these committees, their committees will have in-depth discussion because they do not have what you call these 800 members or 500 members and we do have in Lok Sabha and 250 members or 245 members in RS. So, they will have time, they can have in-depth discussion there right? and thereafter these committees can recommend few changes if need be to the parliament and thereafter parliament after a small debate right they can pass or reject the bill depending on whether they like to pass it or not so i hope this purpose of committee would be and what is this committee would be clear to you let us see the other aspect so what is the role of the committees so role we already have discussed that the bills which are referred to these bodies are discussed in depth and recommendations are suggested to the house or speaker or chairman as well if that bill was sent uh, to the committees by the Rajya Sabha. So, in that case chairman, their recommendation is advisory. This is the key word, the recommendation is advisory. But even if the recommendation is advisory, you will see that the government generally does take, government uh, generally does take their advices in account. There are many instances where even the advices, not many instances, in most of the instances, these advices will be accepted because there is something called action taken report that will discuss action taken ATR, right? Action taken report that these committees does publish in which they reflect that which uh, recommendation, which all recommendation that we made were accepted by the government and which all recommendation that we uh, sent to the government and those were rejected. So, that is nothing but a reflection on the nature of the government. So, if government is continuously rejecting all the advices or most of the advices of these committees, the committee uh, that government will be known as dictatorial, right? That they do not believe in democratic ethos of the government or they do not believe in the views of the opposition. So, that is nothing if uh, any particular government is continuously rejecting right that the government can be called authoritarian. So, it uh, it is in this view that the government most of the time does. There are other factors as well why government does accept the recommendation of these committees. We will discuss this right. So, their recommendation although is advisory in nature, but they do have this persuasive value. We will discuss this. It is because of their detailed deliberative functions that these committees has been referred as mini parliament. Let us see why these committees are called mini parliament, right. So, what you do have is parliament does have 45 to 46 standing committees. So, what is this standing committee? We will see. Uh, when we will see the categorization of these committees, right, you will see that the committees has been divided into two categories. The first type is ad hoc committee that is temp temporary and the second type is second categorization is standing committees, right. So, this is the standing committee. So, parliament does have 45 to 46 standing committees and the average size of each standing committee is around 25 members. Although it is not fixed, this is just average size. So, the total number, so you do have 45 to 46 standing committees. And in each committee on an average you have 25 members. So, if you multiply these uh, number of committees from the number of members that is 45 into 25, what you will get is 1125. So, you do have presence of 1125 members in these 45 or 46 committees. While the parliamentarian number of parliament, how many number of parli member of parliament we do have? So, we do have around 800 member of parliament, 545 from LS and 245 from RS. So, it translates into 8790. Uh, so, let us take it in a round figure that approx 800 member of parliament we do have. So, in total we do have 800 head counts while the number of people, the number of members in the committees that we do have is 1125. Even from this 800 you will have to reduce 75 to 80 members because 75 to 80 members are part of council of ministers. So, the effective number of member of parliament to 
participate in the standing committees because this council of ministers can participate in uh, the proceedings of these committees right so you will left only with 7 720 or 725 people right so these 725 people are participating in all these committees while the required number is 1125 so you will see that almost every member almost every member is part of one or other committee there would be some members who would be part of even two or three committees and it is because of presence of all these members on these committees that these committees has been referred as something called mini parliament so i hope why these committees are called mini parliament right you would have and the second factor of this committee is these committees being known as mini parliament is that the amount of discussion amount of debate that they do on the various referred bill right it is because of that that second factor that this committee is called mini parliament as well so i hope this factor you would have understood through these committees legislature exercises control over executive so through these committees we will have a discussion that how these committees ensures accountability accountability of executive towards these legislatures right towards these legislatures so in the parliament chapter while we were discussing this question r right if you remember that image you would remember that while discussing this question r i had said that along with committees right this committee plus question r ensures accountability of executive when I am saying executive, I am referring to council of ministers. So, these question R plus committees are ensuring accountability of council of ministers towards legislature. I hope you do know meaning of accountability. So, through these committees, legislature exercise control over executive. How? We will see in the course of this video because the major focus of this video will remain that how does committee ensures accountability of legislature over the executive or political executive or council of minister so i hope this what aspect would be clear that what is committee would be clear to you and to some extent even why aspect would also be clear to you right so what is this committee so committees are nothing but a smaller body generally of 25 to 31 members consisting of elected and nominated members so this is the key word right so all the standing committee or all the ad hoc committee that we are going to study right if there is a statement that all the members of all the committees are elected only no there are certain committees whose members are nominated as well or if uh, the question is that all the members of committees are nominated even those questions would be or even that statement in the pre would be incorrect because there are certain committees like financial committees there are three committees in this financial committees PAC, uh, COPU and estimate committee we will see in the details so these committees the member come from the voting and from the proportional representation proportional representation by single transferable vote so if there is any statement that all the members of the standing committees or committees in the parliament is uh, or come through the nomination that option would be correct so consisting of elected and nominated member of parliament to discuss the referred bill so all the bill this committees does not discuss all the bills only the bills that is referred by the house by the uh, this Rajya Sabha or Lok Sabha only those bill, uh, bills are discussed by these committees bills and budget in depth which could not be discussed by legislature for the want of time or the expertise role we already have discussed because uh, this thing we already have discussed we already have responded to the question that why these committees are called mem uh, mini parliament so what aspect would be clear to you let us delve into the next slide and let us discuss that why these committees what is the importance of these committees although the two factors we already have responded that why these committees are uh, necessary the two factor that we discussed was for the time for the want of time and for want of expertise right but there are other factors as well that we'll discuss in the next coming slide that why these committees are necessary but prior to this but before discussing that why these committees are necessary let us discuss that what are the there are certain conditions for a committee to be called parliamentary committee 
but prior to discussing this why aspect that why committees has been created or why committees are necessary in Indian parliamentary system, let us discuss certain condition for a committee to be called parliamentary committees. Right? So, in, uh, in our system there is something called consultative committee, consultative committees, then you do have something called cabinet committees. Right? So, what are the factors that separate this consultative committee or cabinet committee from this parliamentary committees. Right? So, there are four factors. Right? These consultative committees are nothing. The cabinet committee you might be knowing. Let me have a elaboration on these consultative committees and thereafter we will study the condition for a committee to be called parliamentary committees. So, these consultative committees are nothing. These consultative committees can be created any time by prime minister or executive right to study any of the purpose it can be so suppose these chinese people they keep incursing into indian territory right so two years ago as well you had this serious issue on doklam right and there was stand of 40 45 days in this doklam issue as well and similar issue you have ongoing in ladakh right so parliament uh, mem uh, sorry prime minister or any of the uh, executive can create a committee of two three member who do have knowledge of foreign relation who do have uh, some kind of academic background some kind of scholarly background so suppose he can have sashi tharoor who had in un you can have this j panda j panda from Odisha, Rajya Sabha member right now. You can have Sachin Pilot, he is also erudite, right, from the Congress, right. So, you can have, uh, means, um, although he is right now perhaps MLA, Sachin Pilot, right. So, these two members and another two members, Prime Minister can pick up who do have this knowledge of foreign relation, who do have some academic background, and he can create a committee and assign them job of studying the reason that what are the reason, what are these, is there any economic reason? or is there any nationalistic reason that okay economically right now china, uh, china is down right they are uh, due to this covid crisis they have been surrounded from every corner and their economy is also going down because of the sour relation with the america so they will be given some term of reference this committee can be given some term of reference tor and can be said Two can be asked to study that what are the you study the reasons why these Chinese keep invading into our territory. Well, is there any something called timing? Right, right now timing is also such that the Chinese economy is going down. So it may be that because to satiate some nationalistic feeling, they might be attacking on. India. So, that is concern, that is the job of consultative committees and those type of committees can be created any time at the bill, uh, will of member of uh, sorry prime minister or the executive, but that is not the case with parliamentary committees. If a committee is to be called parliamentary committees, there are certain set of conditions that needs to be fulfilled. So, for a committee to be called parliamentary committees, these are the conditions. So, the first condition is that it needs to be created by any of the house that is Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha or speaker or the chairman of the Rajya Sabha. Right? So, it needs to be uh, works under the direction of speaker and chairman and it is appointed, elected or nominated by either house, speaker or chairman right so the keywords is that this committee can be appointed as well elected as well and nominated the members of such committee can be appointed elected and nominated either by the house or speaker or chairman not by the prime minister or not by any member of executive so this uh, point you would have understood it works under the direction because it has been created by a speaker chairman or the house it will work on the direction of the head of those houses third point it presents so once their report has been prepared it will present its report to the house most of the time they uh, submit this report to the house but at times you will see that it, these reports can be submitted to the speaker or chairman as well it does have a secretariat provided by the Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha. The meaning of secretary you would be knowing it is nothing but an administrative place with administrative staff to assist this 
committee right so it does have secretariat provided either by rajya sabha so in rajya sabha or lok sabha wherever this committee does belong right there would be two or three rooms and there would be some staff at the joint secretary level or secretary level who will assist this committee in their work so if any committee mind you is fulfilling all these four condition not any of the four condition so this can be a trap created by upsc in prelim that if the committee is fully fulfilling any of these four condition can that committee be called parliamentary committee the answer would be no the, uh, for a committee to be called parliamentary committee it needs to fulfill all these four conditions so i hope what are the condition for a committee to be called parliamentary committee Uh, the points would be clear to you right let us move to the next slide and now start discussing again the why aspect of committee so why committee is needed so see parliament multifunctional role of parliament so this point we already have discussed that besides the law making besides the governance besides the administration parliament does have all these jobs right they do have so they do have this constituent power they have to amend the constitution they do have this financial power as a financial power they do create budget they pass the budget they do have judicial power they have to impeach uh, president they have to remove vice president they do have to remove speaker they can remove vice uh speak uh, sorry uh, this deputy speaker right so as part of judicial power as part of electoral power they do elect many people then as part of legislative power they enact laws then they do have executive power so this parliament the role of parliament is multifunctional but if you ask from a layman that what is the job of parliament he will respond you that the parliament simply indulges in law making and it has to govern but if you ask from a upsc aspirant his answer should be like this that the parliament does have a multifunctional role right so when you have this multifunctional role by the parliament and you have continuously growing population continuously growing educational level you have 24 by 7 media so this 24 by 7 media this rising level of education this rising level of political awareness right this rising level of what you call education so all these things what these things have done is that this these things have raised the expectations increase the expectations of the people right because they do have now more they are more politically aware right so they are talking about their rights they are talking about the responsibilities of government they are talking about the responsibilities of administration right so rise of literacy in last 73 years has caused increased political awareness and that has increased expectations of the people and hence functions of the parliament has also increased right so the parliament which was earlier focusing major focus only on the law making and the governance right now you would have seen prime minister going country from country and trying to leverage the power of the indian diaspora why he is doing that right because he know that in the age of international village right in the age of this international village unless you leverage the power of this diaspora indian diaspora you won't be able to have good relation you won't be able to deal with this assertive presidents like trump right so this is what this uh, going to the country talking to the diaspora ultimately this is what this is part of increased functions of our executive and why this is happening because the expectation of our peoples have increased right so you have increasing functions increasing expectations of member of parliament but number of mps have remained same so you had 800 uh, member of parliament including rajya sabha or lok sabha or 790 itself right so you had these number of member of parliament at the time of operationalization of constitution in 1950 and still you have same number of member of parliament so if you see the demand supply right De on the demand side you have more expectations from the people and you have on the supply side you have same number of member of parliament right so you need something called committees right because all these functions that we saw with the increased expectation 
by the people, by the voters, by the citizen cannot be fulfilled by these 800 or 790 member of parliament and that is why you need committees. Let us see another reason for having committees. So, parliament neither has enough time nor expertise. So, this factor we already have studied to discuss all the issues at its disposal. A traditional politician may not have expertise on science on tech environment or economic etc and they may not be expected even they may not mean even if we are expecting all the member of parliament to have means I see even UPSC aspirant talking about that our politicians are illiterate see education educational level does not decide all the things and to every member expecting every member of parliament to have knowledge on yes as a UPSC aspirant because you have to get into administration right you need expertise on these all these things if not expertise you need uh, at least basic knowledge but to a traditional politician because what they need is understanding of people's life right that's all so even expecting that they to have expert knowledge on all these things would be a wrong premise or would be a wrong expectation right so a traditional politician may not have expertise on science on tech environment and economy over the years number of uh, days that the parliament has set for the business transaction has gradually reduced if you could uh, pick out the data from the prs website that uh, how many days how many number of days lok sabha first lok sabha transacted business and how many days this 16th uh, 17th rather 16th so 16th lok sabha you will see first lok sabha uh, i guess sat for some 152 or 150 days i am not sure about this first lok sabha but the 16th lok sabha i am sure about and it was somewhere 335 days right so the number of days if you will compare from the first lok sabha to the 16th lok sabha that the lok sabha has transacted business for it has come progressively down so they do not have the, this expertise and neither they do have time as well because earlier means as i told that in 1950s right the people's expectations from these member of parliamentarians were completely different but now the people's expectation is totally entirely different and so the member of parliament are sitting in Lok Sabha for the lesser time they are going into the political constituency and they are spending in their political for the political purposes right they are spending time a more amount of time there. Right? So, the two factors, uh, the two major factors, there are other factors as well, but two major factors for having committees that is time and expertise. Right? So, these points you would have been clear on, right? let us discuss other points. In the age of 24 by 7 media, this is the third point for which committees has been created or committees are necessary. So, in age of 24 by 7 media when optics take over rationality, let us understand this. So, you would have often seen uh, in the parliament, in the Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha, these uh, opposition member who does not matter who, which party is in opposition. The only the prime job if you notice from the Lok Sabha proceeding or the Rajya Sabha proceeding we understand a normal person can understand that the prime job of uh, this opposition member is only to create ruckus because all the time most of the time not all the time most of the time if you notice these opposition members you will find in the well of the house keep creating noise they keep wasting time right and that leads to the wastage of productivity of Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha. Again, uh, if a data from the PRS website, again if you could obtain that what has been the productivity of Rajya Sabha and productivity of Lok Sabha or the amount uh, that they have spent, amount of time that they have spent on the law making, if you can pick up right, because these data was, would be necessary if you are writing the mains examination. Right. The, it is these kind of question, general question or static questions are never asked. It is these kind of question over the productivity of Rajya Sabha, over the productivity of Lok Sabha, their comparison from the first Lok Sabha or second Lok, how this uh, law making functions or the time that is being passed on the law making is continuously coming down. It is these kind of data that 
is asked in this uh, kind of mains examination. So, what my point is that this political posturing, political posturing and populism dominates wisdom. So, the point that I was discussing was that the member of parliament when in this age of 24 by 7 media when they see that there is camera focusing us every action of ours is being watched on right. So, you will see that the rhetoric, rhetoric takes over the wisdom. Even despite being in parliament, they keep addressing their political constituency back in the Lok Sabha or the assembly or uh, there in state, right? They keep addressing. So, if there is any bill that is being presented in parliament, suppose in Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha and that bill is favoring reservation, you will find that the party which uh, has constituency in lower caste, they will favor that bill, right? They will make all the noises to show that they are favoring that bill. But the party which drives vote bank from the upper caste, you will find that directly or indirectly, although they would not like to be seen anti-reservation, but directly or indirectly they will create a ruckus and they will try to oppose this bill. Or at least the posturing that they will do that will reflect that they are anti-reservation. Right? And to show that they will come into the veil, they will do all kind of noises, they will walk out, means they will not indulge in productive discussion. They will not participate in the decision making or they will not participate in through the debate or discussion because they have to show uh, their voters that we are anti-reservation. So, this is what happens. Let us take an example to show you that yes, what is the difference between and it is in this context because uh, the populism dominates wisdom. It is in this context that the rationality uh, optics takes over the rationality because of the 24 by 7 media because you have people watching this right the committee the importance of committee is needed or the committees is needed because the meetings of the committee does not happen with this media presence or does not happen with the broadcast uh, of their proceedings so i hope this point you would have understood it becomes difficult to obtain right view so it is in this circumstances that it becomes difficult to obtain right view of political parties when lok sabha rajya sabha proceedings are being continuously televised so even lok sabha and rajya sabha leave aside other media channels right even lok sabha rajya sabha does have their dedicated television right so it is difficult to obtain the right view means practical view whatever their genuine view on a particular bill right that will be dictated by the political compulsion right so if you talk about that political compulsion how uh, this 24 by 7 media changes the view of person right see the citizenship I mean, what was the stand of congress government and dr manmohan singh the our ex pm what was their view on citizenship amendment act their view was they were vehemently opposing that bill. But if you see his stand in 2003 in a committee when NDA government was in power, he was vouching, he was asking uh, the NDA government to pass a bill to provide a citizenship to the religious minority from Pakistan and Bangladesh. So, completely changed stand in the committee when he was speaking in 2003, he was saying that he supported the idea of citizenship to the religious minority from neighboring country in committee in 2003 and his position has been completely changed in 2019 right so totally opposed view because then he his wisdom was being dedicated by the rationality and because he was away from the camera so, he could openly, he could take that stand that yes, I do support because genuinely even they know that the religious minorities in Pakistan is being persecuted, right? And you cannot, means you will have to draw a red line. When you talk about CA, you will have to draw the red line that we cannot give citizenship, means the main contention of uh, the opposition parties were that you make it neutral. Right? You make CA, award of CA, award of this citizenship uh, religiously mute, neutral, you award this citizenship whosoever is being persecuted does not matter whether he is being persecuted because of religion or because of political ground, he or she should be given this citizenship. If he, anybody is applying, he or she should be, but you will have to draw a red line, right? Because we cannot keep welcoming every person, right? We do have limited resources and that 
uh, red line was drawn on the religious line that because we do have certain responsibility because of the partition that happened in 1947 and the major line of partition was that it was uh, partitioned on the ground of religion right so government took the stand they draw the uh, drew the red line that no on the religion we will have to award this citizenship in ca on the religious ground itself because they are in the pakistan or bangladesh they are being persecuted because of their religion right so the ground in our ca cannot be other than religion and the same stand of manmohan singh has completely changed while in 2003 and while in 2019 because of only because of this region so i hope this reason why committees is necessary right the third reason would be also clear fourth point it helps build consensus among different political parties bills refer to the committees are generally passed remove this b so political parties bills refer to these committees are generally passed without political contention so i hope this point you would have understood even if you could not understood this point that why bills refer to the committees are generally passed in parliament passed in parliament without political uh, contention right we'll understand this when we will discuss the working of the committees right that how committees does work so when we'll discuss the working of the committees we'll emphasize on this point right it shares committee shares workload of parliament and it saves precious time it also increases efficiency and effectiveness of the parliament so when bills are referred to the committees committees does have in depth discussion wide discussion and thereafter when uh, the recommendations are returned to the parliament right the discussion the wide amount of discussion or extensive discussion is not necessary in the house as well because house already know that there has been immense amount of discussion wide amount of discussion that has gone at the committee stage so there is no point of discussing this bill all over again they simply move the amendment whatever recommendation that has been given by the committee although again i am saying that the committee's uh, recommendations are advisory in nature but most of the time these uh, recommendations are taken into the account by the government and government simply moves the amendment and passes that bill right so that's why i told that it saves precious time of the parliament otherwise without committee it was the duty the discussion was the duty of parliament of that particular house and if that house whole of the house would have indulged into the, into the discussion of a bill they would have not been able to pass more than two or three bills in a session but now they are passing 8 to 20 bills in a session so that is nothing but because this committee by its own discussion in the back rooms right they have saved the precious times right and it is also increased it has also increased the efficiency so earlier they were passing two three bills now they are passing eight to twenty bills right again this number can vary right this number is not fixed i have just given an example and it also increases the effectiveness of the parliament so i hope the why aspect would be clear let us move to the next slide and let us discuss the significance of the committees or there are certain points here as well that will reply to the why aspect that why committees are necessary so you do have uh, this thing input from the ngo so when bills are referred to the committee and you have 30 35 members and if the committee feels that the opinion of any of the stakeholder or opinion of any of the ngo or opinion of the public or opinion of any of the technical expert or professional expert what do i mean by technical or professional expert so suppose there is a bill on the climate change right and here the 30 or 35 members that you do have on the committee they may not or even maybe that five member may be expert on uh, climate change and all those stuff but all the members may not be expert and even those expert member may not have the nuanced knowledge so it is very necessary that the technical expert or the scientists on the climate change are called into the committees and their opinion is taken into the account so that the bill can have right provision in that bill right and that's why inputs from uh, ngo if there is any bill which uh, does have any compassionate angle right ngo can be called on right public opinion can be elicited right technical experts can be 
called on. What is the other significance? So, this you can put in Y aspect as well that if the opinion of these people, opinion of any of the stakeholder is needed, right, then that can be taken at the committee stage, right. That cannot be taken if uh, the discussion is going into the house, right. In the house, you cannot call these technical expert. Although at the drafting stage of the bill, right, these things, technical expert, the help of technical expert, the help of public or help of NGO can be taken. But again, that happens at the executive level and the executive's wisdom cannot be believed in the parliament. Means executive wisdom is always questioned by the parliament, by the legislature, right. So, if executive thinks, uh, if the legislature thinks that the enough uh, consideration has not been given to the NGO, enough consideration has not been given to the technical experts view because executive does have a political ideology and the bill that has been brought up, right? the bill uh, at times you will see keep feeding the political constituency of the executive because executive at the end of day is nothing but a political party. So, the whatever bills that they are bringing, right, they may have some amount of political contention, uh, connotation and so the bills brought by these uh, political executive cannot be believed. So, at the committee stage, again these NGO, again the public uh, opinion can be elicited, again the technical expert can, can be called in. Then the next significance of the committees, it is a smaller body, hence detailed investigations can be done, that detailed investigation cannot be done at the house stage, right. We already have explained that because if you indulge in the detailed discussion at the house stage, if you allow 545 members in the Lok Sabha to have proper discussion, you will have wastage of time. Then thereafter all party gets due representation because at the committee stage you will see the membership of the committee, uh, these committees when we will discuss, you will find that the members whatever 30 or 35 members that are on the board of standing committees, right, numbers we will see this number is not fixed, but we will see. So, whatever 30 or 35 members that you do have either coming from nomination or election, the method that is taken care of right, that all the members, all the parties get due representation in proportion to the strength that they do have in Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. So, suppose all the 30 or 35 members has to be drawn from the Lok Sabha and in Lok Sabha, the composition of party is such that the 65 percent of the member belong to the NDA and uh, 9 percent party belong to the, uh, 9 percent of the members belong to the INC, another 10 percent belong to the AIDMK and so on. So, in this commission, in this committee as well, you will see that the 65 percent of the members will belong to the NDA, 9 percent of the members will belong to the Congress and so on. And that is why it is called that the all party gets due representation. So, it reduces the chances of the contention, any kind of contention. Then absence of media because th these people does have closed door meetings and so there is no chance of political posturing, right. Here the decisions are taken by the consensus, although decision has to be taken by the majority in the cab uh, what you call committee stage, but a practice, political practice has developed that the decisions are generally taken by consensus. Uh, our approach is made where everybody's opinion, every party's opinion is taken into the care and that is why I was saying that the government generally, government generally takes uh, the amendments or whatever recommendation that the committee has recommended, government generally takes their amendment or the recommendation by this committee into the consideration. It is because of this region that uh, decisions are taken here by the consensus. Then closed door meetings, right, secures accountability. This point will have an emphasis, right. How does this committee ensures accountability from the executive? Then the approach of all the political parties, all the member of politi uh, all the members of different political parties, their approach remains co uh, cooperative and conciliatory. So, I hope this point, the significance, what is the significance of the committees would be clear to you, right, all the point we have discussed. 
Oh, let us move to the next slide and let us discuss this genesis of the committee. So, genesis of committee, if you want to trace, genesis can be traced from Government of India Act 1990. You have this Montagu Chelmsford reform in 1990 and hence you had this Government of India Act 1990. So, committees can be traced, the genesis of committees can be traced from that act itself. Rather, public accounts committee in Hindi it is called uh, public accounts committee is something called I guess Lok Lekha committee, right. So, public accounts committee is directly mentioned in this 1919 act. Thereafter, uh, in constitution if I talk about this word committees has been uh, mentioned in the constitution, but what would be the structure, what would be should be the functions, what should be the tenure of the committee that has not been mentioned in the constitution. So, if you see article 88 or article 105 that talks about parliamentary privileges or even article 344, right. In all these three articles, there is mention of this word called committee, right. But as far as structure or functions or tenure is concerned of any committee that has not been mentioned in the committees. So, if you want to talk about function, structure or tenure, right, that has been mentioned in the rules of both the houses, both the houses that is Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. So, I hope this genesis of committee would also be clear to you. Let us move to the next slide and let us discuss the working of the committee system. How does this committee system function? How, what is the role of the committee? Although the role we already have discussed, but let us have a pictorial representation. So, suppose uh, this is the larger house, this is uh, for this example let us consider it Lok Sabha although it can be Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha as well, but from the pictures perhaps Sumitra Mahajan is sitting there right. So, she was the ex uh, speaker uh, of 16th Lok Sabha right. So, this house is Lok Sabha. So, suppose a bill originated in the Lok Sabha. Now, the attempt of opposition will be that they will request, they will suggest, they will create ruckus and they would like every bill to be referred to the committee. Now, why opposition likes uh, to send every bill to the committee? Because in committee they do have their member where they can have their say. They can have their say means in house as well they can present their opinion, but no let us try to understand. In Lok Sabha if any bill has originated, right, Lok Sabha in Lok Sabha government already have numbers to get it passed. How come government does have number to get it passed? So, Ordinary bills when are presented in the Lok Sabha, in Lok Sabha they do have means in Lok Sabha government always will have simple majority and perhaps that is why they are in government right. Because even if they do not have the uh, ruling party does not have uh, this 272 number that is simple majority right they will not be part of the government. So, they will always have uh, the numbers required number to get the bill passed from the Lok Sabha means whatever does not matter whatever opposition says if the government of the day or the ruling party would not like to value their opinion in that case they will get it passed anyway without respecting their opinion without having uh, to hear their opinion. But in committee system that does not happen. In committee system every member's view is heard every view, every member's opinion is respected, right. And any bill that is being presented by the government most of the time, right, except few politically neutral bill, all the politically uh, charged bill, if there is a bill related to the Ram Mandir, if there is a bill related to 370 abolition, right, if there is a bill related to 35A, if there is a bill related to triple talaq, right. So, every uh, bill that I cited here has some political connotation, have some advantage that is attached for a particular party. Now, when you have these kind of bill which are political, which is politically uh, what you call charged or politically contentious, right, which tends to benefit a particular political party, right, these member opposition member would like to refer such bill to uh, what you call the committee system, right. But uh, if government finds that they do have numbers, I mean in Lok Sabha they always have numbers. So, what kind of bills will be sent to the uh, committee? So, if the government feels that yes, they do have numbers in the uh, Lok Sabha, always they will have. But about the Rajya Sabha, if the government finds that they do not have numbers. And often you will see that in Rajya Sabha, it is the regional parties that will have control and they always, means in Rajya Sabha you will find that 
रीजनल पार्टी इज ऑफन साइड विद द डोमिनेंट पार्टी विच इज नॉट part of ruling party right so they will always most of the time regional parties will side with uh, other dominant parties right now it is inc indian national congress right so in rajya sabha if the government feels that they do not have numbers or they do not can't manage the number in that case they will heed to the demand of ruling party that has been the practice although ideally idea what uh, what reason we discussed ideally that it is in any case where a uh, professional advice is needed where uh, parliament does not have in depth discussion is needed ideally that was the case that whenever the parliament requires in depth or detailed discussion on any bill or wherever wherever this uh, expertise is needed right those kind of bills should be sent but idea that is a ideal case in practical reality all the games fall on these number games right so whichever politically charged bill where government of the day feels that they cannot manage the numbers in the rajya sabha they need support of opposition in that case government will heed to the demand of opposition they would say okay fine no issue send this bill to the committee right here in committee whatever politically contentious provisions would be there those provisions will be compromised on those provisions the government the members of the ruling party that is present in this committee they will tone down their position those contentious provisions may be removed or may be structured in a manner that it becomes neutral and thereafter when this recommendation comes back to the house that those recommendation will be accepted by the house and it it is at this stage once the government has uh, taken those recommendation moved the amendment so suppose there is a bill let us see the example so suppose this was the bill this bill has three uh, provision a b c this three provision was sent to this committee committee had their discussion they elicited the public opinion they took uh, the professional advice they talked to the technical experts so after having detailed discussion after having in depth discussion right what they came up with they came up with these kind of suggestions so what they did was that out of these three provisions they omitted one provision and they added these three provisions right so that was their recommendation their recommendation was that uh, this provision should be removed after this discussion this detailed discussion and these three provisions should be <coughs> added to the bill now uh, if you remember i had told you that the advices of these body is only advisory in nature it is not binding on the government that they need to accept they need not to accept these uh, provisions or these recommendations but government generally government generally accept these recommendations why they would accept these recommendation because as i already told you that only those bills are referred to the committee where in which case the government does not have numbers in the rajya sabha now if they accept these recommendation of the committee where you had the opposition members contribution as well where you had members from other party as well and if they have given some recommendation for deletion of some clauses for addition of some clauses and if those recommendation are added into the original bill then the opposition will also support that bill so generally you will see that for these reasonings committee's recommendations are taken into account and government will move means uh, their earlier position was this th this three provision now they will have to move because that was already introduced now they will move the amendment to the bill they will say that okay omit this provision and have these recommendations although in between if government was able to talk to any of the regional party and if they saw that no i have been able to manage means if they are able to manage uh, gain the support of any other political party in rs and which could ensure them what you call majority mark in rs as well then they can choose I mean generally this is the practice although the right practice or the democratic practice would be that even despite having or not having the number they should have respected the opinion of the cabinet means that should be the ideal case and that was the very objective that was the good objective with which these committees has been created right but the in practice this does not happen uh, if the government is like somebody 
if the government is being driven by somebody like uh, atal bihari vajpayee the late atal bihari vajpayee who was too democratic in those era these things value uh, valuing of uh, advices of committee could have been uh, uh, thought of but now uh, expecting these things right uh, that even despite having numbers in the rajya sabha despite having numbers in the both houses if any government is accepting the recommendation of the committee that government would widely be appreciated means but but that does not as i told that does not happen right so this is how the committee is function let us have few points regarding the committee in written format so committee after detailed study sends its recommendation to the house government generally moves uh, amendment to incorporate recommendation made by the committee but why the, the question arises but why does government accept the amendment when committee recommendations are advisory in nature so all these things we already have discussed not all bills suggested by opposition is sent to the committee it is usually done in two situation the first situation either when they lack number means ruling party lack numbers or uh, lack numbers or the other case could be where the ruling party is too democratic and really value in depth discussion so only in two cases either when they lack the numbers in the house or when they are too democratic where they do value this democratic practices they do value the uh, opinion of the opposition that if op opposition is recommending some bill to be sent uh, to the committee right then they can that can be sent also since ruling party coalition will mostly have majority in these committees right recommendations will have ruling party recommendation uh, reflection right so let us understand this so most of the time the composition of these committee will be such that you will see that ruling party most or ruling coalition most of the time they will be dominant in committee as well because the membership when you will see this is the proportionate membership does not matter whether the members are coming by election or nomination the strength of members in this committee is decided by their respective strength in the house so suppose any party does have 65% of the seat in a particular house then in the, that house committee as well 65% of the member will belong to that party if any party has 9% of the seat like indian national congress then in committee as well they'll have only 9% so so you will see that the ruling coalition mostly will be dominant in committee stage as well and whatever recommendation that will even if it is toned down to some extent means the core provision the core provision can never be removed even by the committee means whatever core ideology that uh, the ruling party wanted to have in this bill that core ideology cannot be removed because generally it is said that the decision here is taken by consensus but that is only a political practice that reaching out decision by the consensus but if i uh, say the what is the statutory provision so the statutory provision is that decision will be taken by majority only right so if uh, there is any provision on which opposition members belonging to the opposition party is hell bent that no that provision should be deleted or this provision should be added and if that is not agreeable to the members of the ruling party in the committee they can go for the vote and if the opposition can manage to vote out that provision only then that provision will be removed but that cannot be done by the opposition members because most of the time as i told you that the composition is decided in such a manner that ruling party will be in dominant uh, mode right so whatever the core ideology or core section of the bill is there right that cannot be removed or that will not be removed by the opposition members i hope that point is clear to you also since ruling party coalition will mostly have majority in these committees recommendation will have ruling party reflection and when you this recommendation does have reflection of the ruling party when the core provisions are still lying right if these were the core provision and if this core provision of that bill 
right has not been removed by the committee right they have just added something right then the ruling party will no problem incorporating these amendments i hope these points are clear to you right acceptance of recommendation also ensures ecg passes of the bill right although most of the time means i said that the most of time ruling party will be in dominant position but that that does not happen in one case where the members are to be drawn from the both ha houses right so when we'll discuss the standing committee we'll see that the standing the types of standing committee right standing committee are of two types one that has been drawn from a particular house either from lok sabha or rajya sabha and the other categorization will be where standing committee members will be drawn from both the houses from lok sabha as well and from rajya sabha as well their membership will be mixed right so it is in this kind of standing committee right you can expect that the ruling party may or may not be dominant uh, in this kind of case where membership is being drawn from a, a particular house either from lok sabha or rajya sabha right if it is being drawn from only lok sabha then in that kind of standing committee based on because they do have majority in the lok sabha in that kind of standing committee uh, ruling party will have majority but in type of standing committee where members are being drawn only from rajya sabha in that kind of system you will see or in that kind of standing committee you will see that the members may dominate from opposition as well right so in that case this thing that calling coalition party will mostly have majority in these committee this section or this point will not apply right so i hope all these information working of the committee how does committee work right how their decisions are taken what factors influence their decision how uh, these uh, uh, recommendations are made right whether that recommendations will be uh, accepted by the government or not what factors on which uh, this uh, what you call recommendations are accepted right all those points would be clear right now let us move to the next slide and now let us see the categorization of the committees parliamentary committees right so parliamentary committees on broad two levels has been divided into these two categories right the first is standing committee and another is ad hoc committee now standing committee has been further sub categorized into these six categories so ad hoc committee does not have this sub categorization it is the standing committee which has been sub categorized into multiple these six levels the first is financial sub uh, committee then department related standing committees drsc department related standing committees then committee to inquire committee to scrutinize and control then committee for the day to day business of the house and committee uh, the housekeeping committee right so these are the six sub categorization of standing committee right and then there are further sub categorization of this financial committee you have these three committees estimate committee then pac public accounts committee and then copu something called copu committee on public undertaking then you have department related standing committee so there are 24 department related standing committee and uh, almost every sub committee or every standing committee under department related sub committee is attached with one or two ministry then you have this committee to inquire and in committee to inquire there are three sub categorization further then committee to scrutinize so what we'll do is that we'll focus on this what is this to uh, ad hoc committee then we'll focus on this standing committee under the standing committee we'll study these three financial committees that is pac estimate committee and copu as far as other committees are concerned right i have put up the data one liner data right i'll expect you to cover these things although the content does have the details of all these things right but generally these questions are not asked but when i am saying that generally these questions questions from this section is not asked from this section from this section it can be asked from this section it can be asked and this particularly section the role of these three committees is very important the questions on the role of this estimate committee because uh, accountability how does uh, these committees ensures accountability right you will find the major reflection of that accountability role of the committees in these three committees these three committees uh, three financial committee does uh three financial committees that is pac 
estimate committees and COPO, right? So these three committees are called backbone of all the committees because of the financial oversight function that these three committee, financial oversight, oversight functions that these committee perform, these three committees are considered to be very important from means and prelim both perspective, right? So these uh, four committees I will expect you to cover, right? And uh, I am not covering that does not mean that uh, this is not important. It is just that these four committees or further subcategorization is too factual and too simple, right? So it, there is nothing that I could explain and you cannot understand, right? It is just that it is factual and that's why I am not dwelling into this. So let us move to the next slide and let us have the discussion on the ad hoc committee first and thereafter the standing committee. So what is the meaning of if you know the dictionary meaning of ad hoc, it is simply means something transitory, something temporary, right? So an arrangement or any committee that has been created for a particular purpose and once that particular purpose is over, if that committee is disbanded with the fulfillment of that objective, that committee will be called ad hoc committee, right? So ad hoc committee and arrangement made when need is felt, right? Inquiry, any kind of inquiry committee if is instituted against one or two members if they have violated any of the norm of uh, parliamentary behavior, although there is separate ethics committee, right, to look into the behavioral aspect of member of parliament, but if uh, the house uh, or speaker or the chairman feels that to conduct any kind of inquiry, there is a special uh, committee that needs to be instituted. So, that will be of transitory nature, that will be of what you call uh, temporary nature. So, inquiries committee or committees on conduct of certain members during president's address. So, president does address twice uh, to the collective meetings of the both the house. So, if uh, during his address to the house, if any of the member has performed in a way or has acted in a way, be, a way uh, uh, unbecoming of member of parliament. So, uh, during that time, right, any inquiry can be instituted against a member or group of member or committee created on the demand of legislature, right, to discuss any contentious bill, right. So, often you would have seen that uh, for a major scandal, right, this opposition member keeps crying about creation of no, this bill should be referred to joint uh, parliamentary committee in short format it is called JPC, right. So on the Rafal there was a demand that the against the Rafal there were allegation on the defense minister, the role of prime minister was also being questioned, right. And there was uh, chances that there could have been a case of corruption, huge case of corruption, right although that did not happen. So, on the Rafale case, opposition was vehemently def, uh, demanding that a J, uh, JPC, that is Joint Parliamentary Committee should be created, right? And the investigation of this uh, Rafale case should be sent to this uh, JPC. And JPC is nothing again. This will consist of the members from these both the houses as the name suggests joint. So, meaning of joint is that it uh, draws its membership from Rajya Sabha as well and the Lok Sabha as well. So, any committee created on the demand of legislature to discuss any contentious bill or any cases of corruption. So, in past if you see there has been six instances only in last 73 years when you have creation of this JPC joint uh, parliamentary committees. Right. So, what were those six cases? So, 2G scam, then Harshad Mehta scam, then Bofor scam. So, for the investigation and there were three other cases as well for which. So, there have been total six cases so far in the history of independent India where this JPC has been created. Or tomorrow if there is any allegation that there should be creation of committee for the allegation of the corruption in PM cares fund, right? Although there has not been, although there has, although uh, any such committee has not been created, but just I was imagining that if tomorrow there is any uh, allegation and against the government, right, uh, against this handling of PM care fund, right, because uh, this PM care fund will not come under RTI, right? So there is chance that uh, a case against or uh, allegation against this PM care fund can be labeled by the opposition or opposition has raised this issue as well that why PM care fund won't come under uh, RTI and perhaps some minister has also said 
that this will not be audited by CAG. So there is chance that any allegation can, uh, can be leveled against this PM care fund and tomorrow demand of JPC can be created for this purpose as well, right? As soon their scope of work is over, that is ad hoc committee, right, we are discussing. So as soon there is scope of work is over, they are disbanded. So I hope the ad hoc committee would be clear to you. Let us discuss this JPC joint public, uh, parliamentary committees and thereafter we will move into discussion of standing committee. So what is this JPC? So not JPC ad hoc committee, Lok Sabha refers data protection bill. So this data protection bill had been passed in 2018, right? So Lok Sabha refers data protection bill and when I am saying that Lok Sabha refers this data protection bill to the joint select committee here the joint select committee is a special creation right and this is part of ad hoc committee right special creation right this is not part of the standing committee that we will read in the course of the video right uh, sidestepping the parliamentary standing committee so generally bills are sent to the standing committee but sidestepping the parliamentary standing committee on information and technology lok sabha adopted a resolution right so how these uh, bodies will be created how the joint parliamentary committee jpc or any select committee can be created we'll see the process of creation of this jpc or select committee right that is besides this parliamentary standing committee right whatever structures that are there right whatever structures that we do have right the jpcs are nothing but ad hoc arrangement besides all these committees that we do have all these standing committees that we do have right so this jpc or select committee is over and above or whatever we do have standing committees right that is over and above so jpc is nothing but over and above this standing committee so sidestepping the parliamentary Standing Committee on Information and Technology, the Lok Sabha adopted a resolution moved by Union IT Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad to refer personal, so here you see, Minister presented the bill, a data protection bill and Minister itself is moving the resolution to be sent to a bill, for a bill to be sent to this joint select committee. Now in what situation this minister itself, although generally the practice has been that the whenever government moves any kind of bill, they will always be in hurry to get that bill passed, right? But the same minister who has moved the resolution for the introduction of the bill, if same minister is also introducing uh, a resolution for moving this uh, bill to the select committee or joint select committee, in that case it clearly shows only two things. First, either it does not have uh, numbers in the Rajya Sabha, right? It lacks number in the Rajya Sabha, or second, it values opinion of the uh, opposition member. So only two things. It is a reflection of only two things, right? So that is the point. And generally means government also does not have whenever opposition is making any demand for referring any bill to any joint select committee or any of the standing committee right uh, government will not have any problem if uh, the bill is of neutral nature if it is not giving any kind of advantage to the ruling party then government will generally not have problem any kind of of course mean uh, bills of nature of triple talaq or 370 does not matter means how much opposition cries, how much opposition create ruckus. If the government does have no, uh, what you call numbers in the Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha both, right, in that case irrespective of, means that has been the practice that our politicians have adopted in last 10 or 20 years, right. So in that case, right, if it is benefiting uh, the ruling party, in that case they will never like. Uh, government will never like to be sent it to or to be referred it to the joint select committee or any kind of standing committee because that is just a delay delaying tactic by this opposition member because they would know that that particular bill is politically charged and that might uh, benefit politically benefit this uh, ruling party then they will means opposition will always like to send that nature of bill to the committee that we already have discussed right so i hope this uh, ad hoc committee would be clear to you under the vertical of ad hoc committee let us discuss the joint protect joint parliamentary committees how they are created right so joint parliamentary committee is a ad hoc committee 
constituted rarely to investigate major cases, generally cases of corruption. So, whatever ad hoc committee, six ad hoc committee that we saw on the previous slide, right, most of the time uh, it was the Harsad Mehta case, then you uh, had another Ketan Parikh case in the, that was related to the uh, scam itself, right, then committee to investigate 2G scam, then committee to investigate Beaufort in 1988 or 1989, right. So, whatever JPC that has been instituted so far that six committees, uh, six JPCs, right, that has been created, right, generally to deal with cases of corruption. Now, how the JPC can be constituted, right, only if opposition demand, no, it um, a resolution for that creation of this JPC will have to be moved by one house. And if it has been moved, a resolution or a motion for uh, institution of a JPC has been moved by one house and if the other house agrees to that motion, in that case JPC can be created. Alternatively, if that is not the way, alternatively if the chairman of the Rajya Sabha and speaker of the Lok Sabha, if they feel that the demand of opposition for the creation of JPC is important, even in that case JPC can be created. So, if house is not taking up the resolution, because for the resolution of creation of JPC, it is necessary that the government does agree to it. But if government uh, does not agree for the creation of JPC, right, in that case, if the speaker which is expected to be neutral, although speaker does belong to a political party, but speaker is ex expected to perform a neutral role. So, a speaker can take, if they feel that the demand of opposition uh, in their opinion is right, so they, uh, he and chairman of the Rajya Sabha can sit together and if these two people approve, so even in that situation, JPC can be created, right. So, can be constituted by the motion passed by one house and agreed by other. Alternatively, it can also be constituted by agreement among head of both the houses. Member from both the houses, it will have Right? The only caution is that the Lok Sabha will have more members in the JPC than the Rajya Sabha. And what will be the numbers? So, Lok Sabha will have two times the members of the Rajya Sabha. So, if it is a 30 member JPC, Lok Sabha will have contribution of 20 members and Rajya Sabha will have only 10 members. I hope this point is clear to you. So far, uh, 6 such JPC has been created, this point we already, for the 2G spectrum, VVI chopper case in 2000, chopper scam, right, uh, in 2013, then soft drink and pesticide issues, then Harsad Mehta, right, so all these scandals, these are corruption scandals, right, JPC can call members, so this is a quasi-judicial body, right, and JPC can call any of the members for the production of evidence or any member from the bureaucracy and if these people are refusing to attend, if they do not attend the meetings or if they do not cooperate with the JPC, right, that can be called, considered as contempt of the house, not contempt of the court, but the contempt of the house, right. So, I hope uh, this creation of JPC and what is this JPC Joint Parliamentary Committee would be clear to you and this JPC again I am repeating, we have studied under the vertical of ad hoc committee. So, whatever means uh, ad hoc committee regarding ad hoc committee, whatever information that could have been discussed, right, we have discussed. Now, let us move to the next slide and let us start discussing this standing committee, right. So, here you had one example, opposition reiterate demand for the JPC probe. So, this was in case of uh, Rafael case for which this opposition was demanding creation of JPC, right. So, standing committee. So, if I take the general information, what could be the standing committee? So, completely opposed to the what was uh, what was the case in ad hoc committee. So, ad hoc committee had been created for a particular term or for a particular objective, but that will not be the case in standing committee. Standing committees are created for fixed term and that fixed term, they are permanent in nature and regular committees which are constituted from time to time in pursuance of the provisions of any act of parliament or rules of the house. Their term is generally one year, generally when I am saying 
there are certain committees whose terms may be more than one year or less than one year as well. So, if there is any provision the, in the or if there is any statement in the prelim that the term of uh, standing committees is fixed for one year, that statement would be incorrect because we will see, we do have put up a list where you will see that the committees like business advisory committees and there are other committees as well whose term is not fixed like one year, right? It will continue to function until a new body, uh, sorry, no new body, not uh, new members have joined this business advisory committee, right? However, certain committees continue to function until they have been dissolved. If I talk about the membership, member may be elected, standing committees members may be elected or they may be nominated as well. So, financial committee, when we'll see the one uh, feature of financial committees that does have three subcommittees, right? So, their members are elected while other department related standing committees or other standing committees subcategorization you will see their members are nominated. Number of members are two not fixed, right? So, there are certain committees which have 31st department related standing committees, their membership is fixed at 31, while in financial committee you will see that the two committees does have 22 members, while estimate committee that is third committee does have 30 members, then there are certain other uh, standing committees uh, that has 15 members, few have 10 members as well, right? So, the number of members in this standing committee is also not fixed. Minister Ministers are not nominated, elected in these committees. So, this is a one common feature of the standing committees that ministers or uh, any member means who is part of council or minister, he or she will not be elected or nominated as part of standing committee. So, I hope uh, what you call uh, these common features of the standing committee or the definition of standing committee would be clear to you. So, there are certain committees members of which are uh, put to that committee or put on the panel of that committee by method of election. So, what are those committees? So, it is three committees under the financial standing committee and then committee on the welfare of SC and ST and committee on the office of profit. So, these five committees members are drawn from Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha right, by the method of election and what kind of election is used. So, you will see proportional representation by single transferable vote, right. So, that is the method of election through which the members of these five committees are drawn, right. So, this is the same method of election that we do adopt for the election of Rajya Sabha members for the election of uh, this president and vice president. Then other standing committees that we will see their members are drawn from uh, houses, house or houses right by process of nomination right. So, I hope this point would be clear. Let us move to the next slide and let us discuss. So, we do have in total 45 standing committees, 45 standing committees of which 24 are joint standing committees. What is the meaning of joint standing committees? So, the meaning of joint standing committee is that their members are drawn from Rajya Sabha as well and Lok Sabha as well, right. So, that is the meaning of joint standing committee. So, out of 45 standing committees that we do have, right, 24 are joint standing committees while 21 are single house committees. So, single house committees ka kya meaning hai? So, the meaning of single house committee is that the 21 houses, uh, 21 standing committees either function under the Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha, right. So, out of this 21 single house committee, agar further bifurcation aap dekho, so 9 belongs to the Rajya Sabha and 12 to Lok Sabha right. Uh, we do have 24 department related standing committees, right. You saw on the previous slide when we, we were looking into the sub categorization here, right. You have this 24 department related standing committees, right. Out of these 24 department related standing committees, 16 committees that we do have lies under the administrative control of Lok Sabha 
out of this 24 department related standing committee mind you department related standing committee is nothing but a further sub categorization under standing committee so standing committee we had shown right it has six uh, sub categorization 1 2 3 4 5 6 right so the first sub categorization was financial committee and second sub categorization was department related standing committees right drsc so uh, under financial committees you had three sub committees and in department related standing committees we do have 24 committee sub committees right so of those 24 department related standing committees 16 department related standing committee comes under administrative control of ls it does not mean that their members will not be drawn from Rajya Sabha. The only uh, purpose of telling this that the 16 uh, committees comes under the administrative control of LS that only means that they will be means their rules of procedure or their rules how they will function will be guided by rules of procedure of LS right. So that is the their members may belong to the Rajya Sabha as well. And eight under Rajya Sabha right I hope these uh, basic information would be clear now let us delve into the next slide and let us start discussing these things one by one so let us first focus into the financial committees and the three committees that we do have under financial committees and thereafter we'll discuss this department related DRSA department related standing committees right so until here we'll discuss right marginally we'll see here as well but hereafter I will expect you because these are very factual things right. So, the first committee there are three committees that we see under this financial uh, committees that is PAC public accounts committee thereafter estimate committee and then committee on public undertaking right. So, there are certain common feature we will study these things uh, these three subcommittees in detail but there are certain common feature common thread for all these three committees right so first let us see that what are the common thread that will work that we need to remember for all these three committees and thereafter we'll discuss these things separately so the members are drawn from the house or houses what is the meaning of house and houses so there are there is a particular committees which whose member belong only to particular house while the other two committees that is public accounts committee and cope uh, COPU that is committee on public undertaking their members are drawn from both the houses that is why members are drawn from house or houses by nomination no they are not drawn by the process of nomination that is why there is this strike through because in prelim it can happen that uh, in flow you may end up mark, uh, marking this nomination option right. So, if there is any uh, that ok all the members of the financial committee come through the process of nomination and that is why I keep in uh, putting this information that ok nomination no that is why I keep uh, putting this strike through they come by the process of voting. So, all these three committees member does not matter where there is where it is drawn from whether it is drawn only from the Lok Sabha or Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha both but the common thread would be that they will be drawn by process of voting and that is proportional representation by single transfer. The second common thread for all these three committees is that the here the all party because the method of election that you have chosen is proportional representation through single transferable vote and that is why all the parties get due representation depending on the strength that they do have in uh, Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. Then the term of all these three committee is one year right. Another common point is that ministers will not be appointed as members then all three financial committees perform oversight uh, functions and keep executive accountable to the legislature their recommendations are advisory in nature right government may or may not consider it right so these were the common features that we do have for these three sub committees or three committees let us move to the next slide and let us start discussing these three committees one by one so first we'll discuss this estimate committee thereafter we'll discuss public accounts committee and thereafter in last we'll discuss this copu right committees uh, committee on public undertaking so here you do have this estimate committee what is the meaning of estimate so the meaning of estimate is that suppose you are going on a tour right 
on a tour to Europe, but right now Europe is a dangerous place, right? It will continue to be a dangerous place until <laughs> one year, right? So suppose means we are taking a hypothetical case. So suppose you are going to a tour on Europe, right? So you will take of about the expenditure, you will take an estimate that okay, likely I'll spend perhaps I'll spend four lakhs, right? Including the cost of transportation and all, all the four lakh will not suffice, right? Four lakh for a single person, right? It will be sent into it will be uh, spent into flight itself so suppose six lakhs you are going likely to spend on a two day tour to europe right so you take estimate but actuals may differ right in reality it may be some 5.5 or it may be 6.5 right so the job of estimate committee will be clear from its word itself right so the job of so when budget is prepared right on the first day uh, Madam Fri uh, Finance Minister or whosoever is Finance Minister, she will read the general statement of the budget, right? Thereafter, a leave of few weeks are taken, right? And in those weeks, right, uh, demand of grant would be made, right? In the general statement, it would be clear that, okay, what demand of grant? There is something called demand of grant, right? It is nothing demand of grant is nothing but uh, it is expenditure that has been sought by different ministries so suppose ministry of home affairs has sought for 5000 crores sorry 50000 crores right uh, ministry of social justice may ask for 10000 crores that okay throughout this uh, next uh, one year right I will be needing means social justice ministry will be needing 10,000 so similarly uh, another ministry will be also be asking for similar kind of amount so this amount that has been sought by different ministry this is nothing but estimate and these are called uh, what you call a demand of grant so these amounts are nothing but estimated amount the amount that you had estimated that okay I will be able to spend six uh, lakhs right but you actually you ended up spending only 5.5 lakh right so there was difference of 50,000 right so similarly things can happen here as well social justice ministry which had sought uh, 10,000 crores right they may not be able to spend all these 10,000 crores they may be able to spend 8,000 crores only but they demanded this 2,000 additional crores because it may happen that over a period of time in ninth month or 10th month, means this is the tendency of a government department, this is the tendency of ministry that they generally do ask more amount from the government or in the budget, right? So the job of estimate committee is to reduce that gap between estimated amount and the actual amount, right? So in the gap of whatever few weeks that is taken after the introduction of the budget and in the second reading the second time when this uh, member of parliament assemble in the, uh, the parliament for the discussion of the budget in that gap the estimate committee try to bring these estimated amount that has been sought by various ministries as part of demand of grant right they will try this uh, estimate committee will try to bring uh, these amounts near the actuals as much it can be possible so this is the primary job of estimate committee although the functions uh, that we are supposed to discuss the functions we will discuss on the other slide but that was the meaning of estimate committee and that is the primary function if i talk about the general information regarding the estimate committee all 30 members come from the lok sabha alone so one thing that has to be noted here that the members of the estimate committee come from Lok Sabha alone. They are not drawn from the Rajya Sabha, right? While in Kopu and Public Accounts Committee, you will see their members are drawn from both the houses. So that is the one difference. And the logic here is that because this is a budgetary function, right? In article, when we were discussing a money bill under article 110, there as well we had seen that Lok Sabha had been in discussion stage that has been mentioned in article 109 you had seen that Rajya Sabha had limited role as far as voting and amendment moving amendment on the money bill under article 110 was mentioned.
right so their role rajya sabha role here as well because it is the lok sabha which has this elected members right it is the government means general underlying reasoning is that the government needs to have control it is the elected members who needs to have control over the finances and not the unelected and that's why this lok sabha has been given Uh, an amount of control over the finances and that's why you will see that estimate committee whose job is to bring these estimates near the actuals right so this is nothing this function is nothing it is a controlling function over the finances right and that's why this uh, their role estimates committee membership is drawn only from the lok sabha but when you will see this public accounts their job is to investigate uh, this uh, expenditure of the amount that has been sought by various ministry there you will see that when investigation is going on during the investigation right i am using a lame word right investigate the word investigation has not been used in regards the word that has been used is examination right examination of the account right so when examination will go as part of this psc there you will see that rajya sabha members are part of that committee so i hope why lok sabha alone has been made part of this estimate committee would be clear by method of this election method we had already seen as part of common points of three committees in the previous slide then chairman is appointed right although members are elected by this method of pr stv but chairman is appointed who will appoint it is the speaker who will appoint right she belongs and generally the chairman will belong to the ruling party so i hope this point for term is one year minister is not appointed as member so the general points would be clear to you right it is this point that you need to these two learnings that you need to remember that the estimate committee members belong to ls only and their chairman belongs to the ruling party and not the opposition party in pack when we'll discuss in pack you will see that the chairman will belong to the opposition party right in case of pack so i hope this general point would be clear to you let us move to the next slide and let us so why members from the rs alone we already have discussed the job of estimate committee is to bring estimate near uh, actuals so this is nothing but uh, intervention and elected representatives alone should have control over the finances right so that was the logic why ls members alone now let us discuss the functions of this estimate committee so estimate committee is also called continuous economic committee the advice of this committee remains available to the ministry throughout the year and that's why this estimate committee has been called continuous economic committee it attempts to bring actual estimated estimates of demand of grant near the actuals and that's why this committee has been called estimate committee it reports what economies improvement in organization efficiency or administrative reform consistent with the policy underlying the estimate may be affected let us understand that these two points we already have discussed let us discuss this so while looking into this demand of grant it will not only look into the demand of grant but it will look into few other things as well that what are the policy what policy that government so see uh, what is this policy policy is nothing but as it is a tool to achieve certain objectives right so if the objective is to poverty alleviation government will have some policy but there may be some alternative policy as well which can bring same results same results meant which can also uh, remove or alleviate this poverty but with reduced economy but with lesser amount of uh, finances right so in that case this is the job of this estimate committees that in what ways economies can be brought right there are certain structure then for the implementation of this particular objective there would be certain structure when i am saying certain object uh, structure what does it mean so suppose for uh, implementation of this scheme at the ministry level there is certain structure that has been created which has uh, suppose 10 joint secretary 10 js then there are five under secretaries then at the state level so suppose at the state level you have directorate directorate office here as well you have certain 
people certain officers then at the field level for the implementation you have certain uh, structure certain officers certain people now there may be coordination issues there may be uh, uh, what you call file signing issues right there may be multiple layers at these three levels so what changes what improvement that can be brought into this administrative structure right in order to bring uh, efficiency in the organization or in order to bring uh, economy into this goal policy goal that is the job of e estimate committee so i hope this point would be clear to you right then next to suggest alternative policies in order to bring about efficiency and economy in the administration clear to examine whether the money is well laid out within the limits of the policy implement simple to suggest the forms in which estimate shall be presented in the parliament so what is this form right so whenever estimates whenever demand of grants are made by the ministries demand of grants are made by any ministry so every ministry does make this demand of grant of 10000 crore or 50000 crore or 40000 there is certain format in which that demands of grant is to be made right so there would be some heads there would be major uh, sub heads right on which so suppose uh, ministry of home affairs right so ministry of home affairs does have various department under various department there are uh, scheme that is running under that scheme there would be certain projects right so there will be assignment so it's not that if you have uh, ask for 10,000 crores, right? You will just simply say that no, this 10,000 crores I as a ministry is asking. No, that will not happen, right? You will assign the amount under different heads and different subheads, right? Different projects, different schemes, right? So, in what format that amount is sought by or, or that demand of grant is sought by the ministry, right? That format is decided by none other than estimate committee itself so if uh, two year down the line or three year down the line if that format has to be format of this demand of grant has to be changed by any ministry it will go to the estimate committee right and it will ask suggestions so in 2016-17 right department of economic affairs uh, department in ministry of finance Right. They had to change this format. Right. So they had gone to the estimate committee uh, and the Unone Kata because change karna a prescribe karo. Right. So that is the function, all the functions of the estimate committee. I hope you would have understood. There are certain points which makes uh, this committee ineffective and those certain points are that the committee can only examine the budget after it has been voted upon and not before that right power to question the policies of the parliament has not been conferred upon the committee so what policy to uh, reach any particular objective right they have adopted government so that cannot be questioned by estimate committee and rather the policies of the government what policy they have adopted in PAC as well uh, when we'll discuss in the next slide this public accounts committee the power of questioning a particular even if that uh, policy is leading to the loss uh, to the government exchequer even in that case PAC as the audit body although uh, CAG audited uh, the government's account but so that power to question the government uh, policy at the broader level has not been assigned to any of the uh, committee thereafter recommendations are advisory not binding that we already had discussed its work are in nature of postmortem, right? So once means that the same point after it has been voted upon and not before that, and that's why its work uh, is in nature of postmortem. So I hope everything means structure, function, and the ineffectiveness of the estimate committee would be clear to you. Let us move to the next slide and let us start discussing this PAC Public Accounts Committee. So the general point regarding this public accounts committee is that the PAC does find direct mention in the government of india act 1919 that was called Lok Lekha committee although it started functioning from 1990 1921 but it does find mention in government of india act 1919 right 22 members so in estimate committee how many members you had so in estimate committee you had these 30 members but here the members are 22 members and uh, as I already had told you that public accounts committee and COPU, they will drive their members from both the houses. So 22 members, 
फिफ्टीन मेंबर्स विल बी ड्रॉन फ्रॉम लोकसभा एंड सेवन फ्रॉम राज्यसभा बाय मेथड ऑफ वोटिंग व्हाट काइंड ऑफ वोटिंग सो पी आर एस टी वी प्रपोर्शनल रिप्रेजेंटेशन बाय सिंगल ट्रांसफरेबल वोट देन चेयरमैन इज अपॉइंटेड बाय स्पीकर एंड नॉट मींस here it was clear that the estimate committees because all the members were from the lok sabha then chairman will be appointed by speaker itself but here the question can be asked that chairman can be appointed by the chairman of the rajya sabha as well because you are driving the members from the rajya sabha as well but that is not the case there are more number of people that is being uh, brought by the lok sabha and that's why even in this case chairman men will be appointed by the speaker as well so this chairman appointment function remains with the speaker in all these three committees right she belongs to the here now uh, this pac public accounts committees chairman will belong to the opposition pa party right and that practice has developed in the decades of 1970s term will remain one year that was the similar case and that will remain common throughout all these three committees minister is not appointed so that was the common point so i hope this general information regarding public accounts committee would be clear now let us discuss the functions of this public accounts committee so what are the functions so this committee scrutinizes that this committee looks into looks into what appropriation account this appropriation account i'll not clarify finance account because this is the part of budget so the committee scrutinizes the appropriation account finance account of government of india so these two accounts will be scrutinized by pac public accounts committee and the third report that it will scrutinize is that the report of cag right so these three reports will be scrutinized by Uh, what you call pac public accounts committee appropriation account of government of india then finance account of government of india and then reports of cag right while doing so it is the duty of committee to satisfy itself kis cheez se satisfied matlab ye tino jab ye accounts ko ye dekh raha hoga ya tino reports ko jab audit kar raha hoga examine kar raha hoga then it needs to satisfy itself from these three things right what are these three things that the money shown in the accounts have been disbursed were legally available so let us understand this so suppose ministry of social justice had sought for 10000 crores 10k crores 10000 crores this k is nothing but a denotation for 1000 uh, right so 10000 crores let me simple it 10000 crore it had sought for right out of this 10000 crores it had said that okay for the implementation of a scheme targeted at handicapped people right it needed to spend uh, uh, suppose 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 500 crores right and out of this 500 crores for a particular district suppose chandni chowk it had sought uh, around uh, suppose say 10 crores or 10 crore would be disproportionate suppose 1 crore now it is the job of this public accounts committee so this 1 crore suppose would be given to the field office that is located field offices are generally responsible for the implementation of that particular uh, what you call scheme right so this field office suppose is lying in the office field office for the implementation of this particular scheme for this handicap people right is lying with the dm office of that particular uh, district that is chandni chowk now it is the job of public accounts committee to see that whether these 10 crores or rather 1 crore whatever amount was was legally available to this dm or not because it is this person this dm in this field office who is responsible for the implementation of this scheme right so you appropriated by the demands of grant sorry by appropriation act by the appropriation act you insured 10000 crores from the consolidated fund of india 
right you have appropriated means uh, uh, the social justice ministry has got this this 10000 crores and when i saw that break up of 10000 crores i saw that the, the one crore was targeted or one crore was meant for the field office or for the dm office of the chandni chowk now it is my job as a psc right that i'll look into whether that amount was legally available whether that was sent to this dm and that was whether it was lying with the dm or not and applicable to the service or purpose to which it has been applied or charged right that the expenditure conforms to the authority who governs it right so here dm is governing it right so i hope two points would be clear right that every reappropriation that has been made in accordance with the provisions made in this behalf under rules framed by competent authority right same thing competent authority it is d right so i hope these these three points would be clear let us move to the next slide and let us discuss other functions of uh, this pact right so the other function is to examine the statement of account of so it will examine the statement or the accounts of whose state corporations trading and manufacturing schemes projects autonomous and semi autonomous bodies so these bodies accounts will also be examined by the accounts so one catch point here is that while examining the state corporation this list of state corporation will not include those psus whose accounts is to be examined by the copu right so committee on public undertakings will also examine certain psus right so it also this copu also does have mandate to examine the statement of account of certain psus so while examining the accounts of state corporation it will make sure pack will make sure that it will not get into the territory of copu money that has been spent on any service during financial year in the excess of amount granted by the house for that purpose so there may be case where 10000 crores was granted to the social uh, justice ministry but what it actually spent was 11000 crores right so it will make sure that one this additional 1000 crores right whenever the next budget is presented right the social Just Just justice ministry uh, does ask for reappropriation of 1000 crores right so it will see whether that 1000 crores that has been uh, extra uh, spent by the social justice ministry is granted by the house for that purpose while examining appropriation account of the union pack is assisted public account committee is assisted by cag so in those areas because it is also examining it is also scrutinizing the report that has been presented by cag right so this financial committee members may not have expertise uh, accounting expertise in all the areas so in those cases it will take assistance of cag because cag uh, duty is to audit uh forms government of india account state account right so while uh appropriating or while examining the appropriation of uh, account of this union government this will be assisted by cag cag acts as a friend philosopher and guide of pack public accounts committee so i hope the functions would also be clear of the pack right so th there are certain points which again uh, makes functions of pack as well affective and the same whatever recommendation that we had in estimate committee right similar points we do have that it does have that advisory function it does perform uh, what you call post mortem function when damage has been done right conducts post mortem examination of the account when amount has already been spent right when they have spent then when these people have already spent the amount on whatever services right then this pack comes to the to examine the accounts right so what can pack do it can just report that okay this damage has been done right it cannot improve anything so conducts post mortem examination of the account ex post facto analysis it does once damage has been done right the committee is not concerned with the question of policy in broader sense it will not question the policy right recommendations are advisory and not binding so the same that was in what you call estimate committee 
Thereafter, you had this last financial committee that is uh, COPO, Committee on Public Undertaking, right? It also does have 22 members like Public Accounts Committee, right? But uh, in Estimate Committee, you have 30 members. Then members are drawn similarly by both the houses, that is 15 from Lok Sabha and 7 from Rajya Sabha by method of election. What kind of election? Again, PRSTV. Then chairman is appointed by the speaker, right? In uh, uh, all three cases, chairman are being appointed by the speaker. Here, C does belong to the so only condition. In uh, this estimate condition, estimate committee, chairman was belonging to the ruling party, right? In public accounts committee, chairman was belonging to the opposition party, right? But in uh, COPU, the chairman should belong to the Lok Sabha irrespective, it does not matter whether he belongs to the uh, opposition party or Lok, uh, this uh, ruling party, the only condition is that he or she belongs to, should belong to the Lok Sabha. Then term is one year common, minister is not appointed as members, right? Thereafter. Uh, functions. So, primary function of COPU is to check the affairs of the public sector uh, undertaking is being run on the sound and prudent business principles or not, right? So, whatever practices, whatever best practices that they are adopting or whatever management principle that they have roped in uh, to function, right? Whether those are being running on sound business principles or not. Then the functions of the committee are to examine the report and accounts of the public undertaking. What is this report? So, report, this report will be by CAG, right, on the public undertaking, right. So, the reports of the CAG on the public undertaking and the accounts of public undertaking. So, one audit on the public sector undertaking is being done by uh, CAG as well, right, and another level of audit is being done by uh, this COPU as well. COPO we are reading, right? So, this red box should have been here, right? So, COPO we are reading. So, the function of the committee is to examine the reports on uh, PSU by the CAG and accounts of the public sector undertaking. It also examines the report of the CAG on the public undertaking, same point, right, that I added it here, right. So, this is the functions of uh, COPO as well, right? If you do the comparison, so it is here, oh, oh. It, need, it also needed to be edited, right? So, you can omit this, you can omit this, this is from the previous lecture, you can omit this, right? Just a moment, omit this, right? So, the confusion that is created uh, while discussing, while comparing these three committees, it is on the composition part, it is on the chairman part. The chairman belongs to the ruling party or opposition or from the Lok Sabha, right? So, these three information, wherever there is chances of the confusion, I have put up in the consolidated manner. So, in con estimate committee, in PAC, in the committee, how many members, where they are drawn from and their chairman will belong from uh, ruling party or opposition. So, those information has been put up here, right? These three you need to ignore because this uh, format had been taken from the previous lecture, right? And uh, I had to delete it, but I did not, I could not delete it. So, when you will get PDF, this information would be edited. As of now, just ignore these three columns. Right. So, estimate committees, we already have seen that 30 members and those 30 members only will be from Lok Sabha. Then PAC, 22 members, 22 members, the composition is that 15 from LS, 7 from RS, then 15 from LS, 7 from RS. About the chairman, estimate committees, chairman should belong to the ruling party because it is the ruling party who should have control over the finance, right. But PAC, which does have financial oversight functions, right? So, he, uh, the chairman of that because he has to, this PAC has to hold government accountable and that is why the chairman of this committee will not be from the ruling party. He or she must belong to the opposition party, right? Then, Kopu from the Lok Sabha. I hope this point would be, this comparison would be clear to you. Now, how does committee ensure? So, this is the most important part of this lecture that how does committee ensures accountability. So, the first reason or the first logic that how uh, this committee ensures accountability is that it can, this committee while examining any kind of amount or uh, while examining any kind of account, it can call any members of the bureaucracy 
ministers can not be directly called into uh, this committee while committee is examining these reports of the CAG or reports of the accounts of the INIA, uh, uh, government of India, right? Those ministers can not be directly called, but it is the bureaucracy which can be directly called and they can be questioned that why you adopted a particular policy or a particular scheme for achieving a particular objective, right? So, you had this poverty alleviation scheme right you adopted a particular scheme right for alleviation of poverty right there can be n number of ways right there can be n number of ways for the alleviation of poverty but if bureaucracy is adopting this particular out of a b c d right it is adopting a which was leading to the extravaganza which led to the uh, expenditure of additional 10,000 crores, right? while if they would have adopted B, that would have been more effective and that would have led to the lesser expenditure, right? those bureaucracy can be questioned at this level. right? So, the minister cannot be called, but the bureaucracy can be called and they can be asked to explain that why did you prioritize a particular policy over the others. right? Then the fear of being called into committees keeps whole of the administration on their toes against any kind of malpractices or against extra vaganja. The other measure which ensures the accountability of executive, right? The other measure is that these committees, standing committee, when we'll discuss, right? You will see, or any kind of committee, they people. Uh, when they are sending any kind of the report or any kind of recommendation to the house right after sending this report or recommendation what they do is they also publish atr something called atr action taken report based on how many amendment or how many recommendation that these people these committees uh, sent and how many those recommendations were actually accepted by the government right so action taken report is published by this standing committee and if any government or any ruling party is not accepting or is rejecting more of the recommendation of the what you call standing committees, then that government will be called against the democratic ethos and their image will be spoiled right in 20 year down the line or 25 year down the line when you are analyzing the data right what you will call that this particular government was not following democratic ethos was not running on the democratic lines because they never accepted or they rarely accepted the recommendations of these neutral committees so it is this fear as well that the most of time you will see that whatever neutral advices that has been given by these committees right those neutral advices will always be accepted by the ruling party or the government in the power so that is the second mechanism or that is the second method or that is the second reasoning that can be uh, put up right uh, that ensures the accountability of executive the committees publishes action taken report mentioning recommendation which were not accepted by the government too many rejected recommendations too many actually so too many rejected recommendations reflects badly on the democratic image of the government so this is the two way that how these financial committees or standing committees ensures uh, the accountability of executive towards the legislature. Financial committee scrutinizes the audit reports of the CAG and appropriation account of the government of India, which is nothing but an oversight functions, right? So again, for the fear of being caught by these committees, right? Again, the minister concerned or the uh, uh, bureaucracy concerned right they also do not indulge into this extravaganza because they know that first this is cag who will audit our accounts then thereafter if there is anything left from the cag it is the pac it is the estimate committee right it is estimate committee also publishes this excel taken report right so it is the estimate committee about the psu who had this copu right so copu as well uh, examines the account of public sector unit right so this is nothing but an oversight function and it is by this oversight function it is by this action taken report it is this fear right 
it is this fear of being called into action that keeps bureaucracy that keeps administration that keeps executive that ensures executive accountability so i hope these points would be clear to you the next section is of department related so this financial committee is over now this just a moment right this financial committee as part of means see under committee we discuss this ad hoc committee under ad hoc committee we discuss this joint parliamentary committee jpc then another sub categorization was standing committee we discussed what is standing committee what is the difference between standing committee ad hoc committee thereafter as part of further sub categorization we discuss financial committees right the three sub uh, categorization here as well then you have drsc department related standing committees right and there you do have so these things i am not covering because there is nothing for sake of analysis these informations are completely factual right i'll have a, a marginal glance over this and thereafter i'll expect you to cover these informations because these are completely factual so you have something called uh, committee on empowerment of women so it looks into the interest of women then you have committee on office of profit then you have committee on privileges motion so this uh, committee on privileges we already have done uh, when we were discussing this lecture on parliamentary privileges what is this committee on women do what will this committee on uh, empowerment of sc and st do so these information are very basic just one reading will suffice and that's why i am not covering but that again i am saying that it does not mean that you will also ignore it so let us delve into this department related standing committee and let us have a marginal discussion right so department related stand, uh, standing committee right you have 24 department related standing committees initially you had 17 department related standing committees in 1993 but come 10 years later and you have in 2004 24 department related so the current position is that you have 24 department related standing committees it does have every department related standing committees does have 31 members every department related standing committee right where 20 now the members of these department related committees come through the nomination right if you remember in financial committee when we were discussing they were coming by the process of voting but in department related standing committees their members are coming from nomination nomination when they are coming from the lok sabha it is the speaker who will nominate right and when they are coming from the rajya sabha it is the chairman that will nominate right so 31 members every department related uh, standing committee has and out of this 31 member right 21 member will come from lok sabha and 10 member will come from rajya sabha so 10 will be nominated by rajya sabha chairman and 20 will uh, one will nominated by lok sabha speaker right nominated nominated minister is not nominated on any of these committees term is 1 year 24 dr uh, scs assist different ministry and department so in the next slide you will see that almost for every ministry you have department related standing committee the primary job of this department related standing committee is that whenever demand of grant is made so it will look into this uh, department related standing committee will look into demand of grant that has been made by various ministry of 24 committees 16 comes under administrative control of lok sabha and 8 comes under administrative control of rajya sabha uh, what is the meaning of administrative control right so they will be guided by rules of procedure of lok sabha or rajya sabha right so that is uh, called administrative control and another factor is that this 16 will be provided secretariat office by lok sabha while this 8 will be provided secretariat office by rajya sabha and they will be guided by rules of procedure of lok sabha and they will be guided by rules of procedure of rajya sabha i hope these things would be clear to you right uh, department related standing committees members 31 21 from lok sabha sorry 21 from lok sabha 10 from rajya sabha if i talk about the administrative control then 24 houses 24 uh, standing committees sola 16 in the administrative control of lok sabha 8 in the administrative control of rajya sabha next information so 
to consider what is the primary job the primary job is to consider the demand of the grant of the related ministry with which it is attached right so you have 24 uh, department related standing committees and almost every uh, uh, this department related standing committee will assist one or there may be means in cases one particular department related standing committee may be an assisting more than one ministry as well so we will see that right so to consider demand of grant of the related ministry or department and report there on right to examine their bills pertaining to the uh, related department or ministry referred to the committee by the chairman or speaker as the case may be right to consider the annual reports of the ministry and department and report there and there on right so these are the basic information right uh, what is this uh, committee just a moment where is that list I guess that list has gone missing. So this was all about department related standing committees on the next slide you have committee uh, to inquire right so it does have uh, three subcommittees committees on petition committee on privilege and committees on ethics content is already there you can read ethics committee committee on privileges this committee on privileges and committee on petition we already have seen in the previous videos then ethics committee is the only new thing that you have to study right then you have committee on the scrutinization and the control it does have these many committees welfare of cst welfare uh, subordinate legislation government assurances what kind of assurance that executive has given uh, to the member during the question hour, right so this committee will look into whether those assurances has been filled or not then papers laid on the table welfare of scst empowerment of women office of profit right all these are just one liners that if you could go through right so these are very factual thing right just a one read will suffice right that's why i'm not reading then day to day functioning uh, of the house right so it do have business advisory committees rules committee private members bills and absence of member another sub categorization i guess would be housekeeping committees right so this housekeeping committee as well have this uh, four uh, sub categorization that is general purpose committee library committee all house committee so all these kind of and on salary and allowances of members so this i'll expect you to read and thereafter we do have certain mcq so the first mcq second mcq third mcq fourth mcq fifth mcq sixth mcq just a moment sixth mcq seventh mcq so these are the same seven mcq that i expect you to attend we'll soon come up with the other lectures as well till then bye bye